future and deepen the prosperity of our souls together. Hello everyone and welcome to Soul Snacks with BDO. This episode is extremely special. It is with a very special guest and this person is someone that I respect greatly, someone that has immensely blessed my life, someone that is a great inspiration to me, someone that is my personal person. He's really an adopted uncle. He's a thought leader. He's amazing. He's, in my own opinion, one of the most brilliant minds in the world. It's a blessing to have him here with us on Soul Snacks and we'll be sharing today about nurturing and deepening the prosperity of our souls. Please everyone welcome with me Olakunle Shurion aka PK. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. I feel really blessed, um, privileged. Um, I want to thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you. For all that you represent, for the strength that you exude. Thank you. Right, and for the value that you have taken responsibility for. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing all that you are with the world and through this podcast you. and many more things that you do. Thank um, you. I thank you for your heart and for your focus. Thank you. It's a blessing to be here in the podcast. Thank you. I'm so blessed to have you. Thank you. So today, PK, I wanted us to talk about the soul. Um, as you know, this is soul snacks, right? Um, basically, we're looking at how we can nurture and deepen the prosperity of our souls in different ways. Um, and you know, one of the things that many religions align or agree on is the fact that there is a soul. Uh, there is an immaterial, uh, intangible part of human beings that lives forever that is immortal um, that we can't see right now actually we can't see i can't see your thoughts i can't see your feelings you know um, but there's a lot of emphasis on our bodies looking after our bodies exercise eat well go for medical checkups you know but i feel like i don't really see enough let me not say a lot i don't see enough on how we can nurture our souls you know and that's really the the most important parts of who we are if we really look at it because you can't really control what happens on the outside but like you say pk what is coming will come it is who we are how prepared we are how we think how we behave how we respond it is those things that you cannot really touch uh, physically that really matter so i wanted to understand what your definition what, what would you say is the definition of a healthy soul so um a different perspective to how the soul um exists in mm. this condition right but it is it is necessary uh, that we understand that the soul is um, a quantity in the human consciousness um, that essentially is guided within two elements, which is the human body and mm. the human spirit. Mm. So the soul, which some we call the mind, mm. is right there between the body and the human spirit, right? So it means that we are human beings living in a body, yeah. or we are spirit beings, Mm. that lives in a body that has a soul, mm. right? And so your soul is your contact with the world, really, yeah. which is your mind. And it's also the direct contact with your spirit, mm. right? Particularly for those of us who believe in the reality of the spiritual experience. Yeah. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or Muslim or Buddhist, or, there are so many religions in the world and beliefs in the world and thoughts in the world, assumptions that really do agree with the fact of the human soul. Yeah. Right? But the truth is, life is reflected um, inside out. Mm, yeah. And, and when you talk about the inside power, yeah. 
you know, you are talking about the battlefield of the soul. Mm. Because that is where everything um, starts and ends with. Mm. So you will not do anything beyond the prosperity of your soul. Mm. You will not, um, you will only go as far as the prosperity of your soul. Right, and so it is necessary that you recognize that environment yeah. and invest in that environment yeah. and be conscious of that environment because mm. the way you think, yeah. the way you see the world, a lot of that will be shaped from um, the feedback that you, you, your body gets mm. from your soul and your soul is also fed from your spirit. Yeah. So you, you want to, um, and a lot of what your soul experiences, you really cannot control. Mm. So things we hit, mm. it's like a marketplace. All kinds of things will, wow. will, will come around you know, that environment. And it is your responsibility to guard that environment. Mm. And to guard it you know, as intelligently as you can. And the way I always tell people is, you know, try to be very conscious of that environment and understand that life is not outside in, mm -hmm. life is inside out, mm -hmm. you know, and how do you become very selective about what qualifies, because it doesn't say so, so, mm. you know, but so and its contents are pretty much managed by time and energy, mm. you know, it's really about what qualifies, being selective about what qualifies for the investment of your time mm. and your energy because mm. whether it's a movie, whether it's a magazine, whether it's a documentary or a novel or your neighborhood or your community, music, you know, music, you know, mm. whatever it is, mm. you know, they do feed into that zone. Yeah. And a lot of what goes on in that zone can be um, in the subconscious. Mm. So they say over 50,000 thoughts go through the human brain on wow. a daily basis. Wow. 50,000 thoughts. Wow. If you ask the average human being how much of that you can account for, if you give him a pen and a paper to list <laughs> how many thoughts went through his mind that day, I doubt if he can list up to 50. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 50,000 wow. go through his mind and he can wow. account for 40. So you can imagine um, how out of control it can be yeah. if we are not deliberately present enough to yeah. choose, you know, what, where, and who mm. qualifies for the investment of our time and energy. Now, mm. the truth is, there is no jail time for how you use your soul. There mm. are consequences as to how the impact on other people, but the freedom yeah. to be stupid or to be foolish are as much human rights as the freedom to be wise yeah. or to be intelligent. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, and all of that is governed, you know, right there in the soul. Mm. So, you, you know that at the end of the day, it comes down to who you give your time to, mm. the geographies and the environment and locations you permit yourself to be in, mm. and the, you know, um, um, so I say people where and um, the third one, I just mentioned it now. Where you are, who, where and what. Mm. So the experiences that you allow. Okay. The people that define that experience and the environment that defines that experience. Mm. It is not wise or even practical to attempt to make a distinction between time and space. Mm. Because they are one. Mm. There's no way to have time without having time in space. Yeah. Space, yeah. time exists in an environment. Yeah. And an environment exists in time. Yeah. So you can't have a what, without, you can't have a when without a where. Mm -hmm. We can't be here mm -hmm. in, at two o'clock without being here in this room. Yeah. Do you understand? So yeah. you can't have a when and not have a where. In yeah. It. And you can't have a where a w where without time is useless. Mm. You just can't say we are we are here. <laughs> so it's time that gives that gives value to space. Yeah. So you, there's nothing like time as an independent experience. There's nothing like space as an independent independent experience. Mm. There's space time, mm. which is how you know value translates. And once you have where and 
war and when then that is where what happens mm. so what are you now doing where you have time and space yeah so it is important that people recognize that all of these things are one quantity yeah you really can't eat your cake or what they say and have, them have your cake and them. eat it yeah you have your cake and eat them you know you can't you you can't make a distinction between you know destination and process you know mm. you, you you can't you can't make because these these things are one you mm. know? so that helps people to, to put a premium on their moments because at the end of life when death is short yeah when retirement is guaranteed and we are at the departure lounge of life ready to take the flight or we've taken the flight yeah our life is pretty much proportional to the contents of our soul, mm. you know, which is in itself is filled with the people we permitted into our lives and those we denied access into our mm. lives, the environments we allowed ourselves to be in and the ones we refused to be in, mm. the moments we prioritize or we put a premium on, the experiences we prioritize and the ones yeah. we did not. Yeah. So at the, at the end of the day, you find out that you really can't complain about what you permit. Mm. You just have to work on your permission. Mm. Right there in your permissions, what you permit, what you don't permit, that is the wealth of your soul wow. and that is the signal to your legacy. Wow. So everything is at stake as far as the soul is concerned. Mm. Everything, the whole of your life, your meaning, your purpose, everything is at stake. Wow. The soul is destiny sensitive, mm. is legacy sensitive, right? Yeah. Nobody will have more money than the wealth of the soul. Mm. You will not have more peace than the wealth of the soul. Mm. You really have to be intentional about really what goes in there. Yeah. And the good book, the Bible says that um, guard your heart with all diligence. Yeah. For out of it flows the issues of life. Yeah. Everything in your in your experience as a human being yeah. is pretty much curated from the soul. Mm. Right? Yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for just showing us mm. the different dimensions of the soul that way. Wow. So PK, you always say, you talk about your experience growing up and you talk about how you spent a lot of time when you were younger on the left side of life. <laughs> um, and, and you know, you made your transition to the right side of life. Could you please speak a bit into that and also then link it to how you, based on your assessment, how your soul has evolved from when you were on the left side of life and making that transition into the right side of life and how you've also maintained it. How would you, you know, can you please speak into that? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm crafted out of mistakes mm. and failures, um, but they have become ladders and raw material for mm. where I am and where I will ever be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did spend a lot of time on the left side of life and at a point, everyone was convinced that I wasn't going to add up to anything. Mm. I took, and to be fair to them, I, I was also convinced that <laughs> I wasn't going to add up to anything. I mean, I was clear and honest enough to understand that I, you can't, I can't live my type of life. And mm. end up. I was sure that by the time I was 30, that I would have been shot wow. or I would be in jail. Wow. Or I will be taking medication with some mental health home or something. Wow. I was sure nothing ordinary was going to be my case. Wow. Whether it was going to be positive or negative, mm. was the conversation book I choose to have at that time. But there was no way I could look at my life and say I was going to be ordinary. I mm. knew I was going to be extraordinary. Mm. I was really extra. By, but the content of that, whether I was going to be extraordinary by being the most evil person in the world, <laughs> because you can either be, yeah. be a Matthew the King or you can be a Bin Laden. Yeah. Both of them are extraordinary. Absolutely. People, right? Yeah. So that was my case. Unfortunately, I didn't have too much benchmark of when I was growing up, nobody was, you don't hear the word mentor, mm. you, don't, you don't have conferences with the of speaking or we didn't have all of that privilege mm. growing up. So um, you are on your own, 
you make all your mistakes, God help you. <laughs> you to navigate them. <laughs> yeah. That's how yeah. it was. Yeah. So I spent 12 years in the university, right? Mm -hmm. Studying a four year course. I wow. was 12 years in college. Um, in my first, first, first four years, I had about 50 something courses I could not pass. Wow. You know, we back in Nigeria, they are called quite carry was. I had wow. about something carry was. Those are courses you should have passed and you couldn't pass. So and then you have to take them again? You take them again. Wow. So you, you, you wouldn't graduate if you don't take them. You have mm. to pass them to graduate. So okay. I battled that for 12 years. Mm -hmm. you know, but somehow I was able to get my degree. But within that period or so, um, first four years of my college life, I was. I was in a gang, I was mm. with what we used to call courts then. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I have tasted everything from chewing gum to cocaine. Wow. Um, life was really wild on the left side of life. Mm. On the left side of where you have parties, you know, boys, girls, <laughs> all kinds of nuances. <laughs> um, you know, I, I speak about confident ignorance, mm. you know that you know nothing but you're not aware that you don't know anything so you pretty much have carry your ignorance with a lot of you know class mm, swag, swag. <laughs> you really don't know anything and, yeah. and sadly okay, there are so many people in the world who function that way wow. who don't yeah. know nothing but they are not aware of the state of their new cells yeah and there are people you cannot help in the world mm. I can help anyone who does not know that they have a problem. Mm, you know? Word. But worse than that, you can't help anyone who thinks you are part of their problem. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is true. No How? How? Say. Yeah. God cannot. Hmm. No one can help anyone who thinks that you are part of that problem. Wow. Right? So, but that is what confident ignorance gives you. It pretty much knows you to your own gaps mm. but most critically is that it gives you a sense of superiority mm. over everyone but wow. deeper than that is it gives you a sense of entitlement wow. that pretty much blames everybody for your, for your situation wow. right and once you do that you label everyone as the genesis of your problem mm. so once you think even your solution provider is part of your problem just imagine that you have headache and you believe the doctor is a problem. I mean, how is he going to help you? It's not going to happen. It's not, I mean, you have to see him as your solution. Right? Yeah. Once you see him yeah. as a problem, you are out. Yeah. So um, that was how I was. Mm. And I was a virus when I was. <laughs> I mean, I was a problem. My new source value wow. was extremely high. I was a stressor in my environment, <laughs> right? People knew I was around. And not just me, but mm. me and my friends. Mm. We were a lot. Wow. We were a quantity, a noticeable, significant quantity, <laughs> right? based on the impact of our way of life. Okay. That community. So a lot of us were rusticated, some wow. were short, you wow. know. So it wasn't an, an interesting experience, mm. right? So two months of final exam, I left the university, right? Wow. And I felt well, it's good riddance to bad rubbish. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think that academics was ever going to add up anything for me. Mm. My mind, I've, I've not really changed from that. Mm. You know, I still believe that academics is one of the most legitimate way of losing your authenticity. Wow. I think people should go to school, but I think a sense of rebellion should accompany their brain into the classroom so that mm. they can compartmentalize what they are learning and take what they need for the uniqueness of their own journey okay. but to also put aside you know knowledge that is not transferable mm. right because every curriculum is designed with an agenda the the owner of the curriculum has a goal there's something mm. trying to turn, turn you to by the time you go through this curriculum yeah right the person who um first certified people you have to either ask who certified, who certified the, yeah, yeah. The first person that said it is the degree to go. Mm. Who gave them that degree to yeah. be able to say yeah. that to get this degree. Exactly. So it means that the knowledge is one to infinity, is horizontal. Mm. But they received it vertical. Mm. Because nobody was approving them. It was zero to one. Yeah. Right? 
And so I'm weary about academics, but I've gone to school here. I spent two years trying to get society will not see you at a level mm. if you are not well documented True. within the system. True. So the goal of academics is regulation and order. And we should mm. respect that because if two people put a knife to your tummy, one can wake you up, the other one can <laughs> That's a surgeon and a killer. Yeah. When you need surgery, the way you know they want to go and see it is academics. Yes. It's academics that allow us to know the difference between a killer and a surgeon. Absolutely. Both of them yeah. can put a knife to your throat, but to your tummy, but not both of them can wake you up. Only yeah. one can wake you up after. Yeah. So, but education is superior to that. And so mm. I I understood very early that my education is superior to my academic mm, Education is superior to yes, academics. Yes, because mm. academic is what you are taught. Education is what you teach yourself mm. through observation and self-improvement. Mm. And education is the ability of the human soul mm. to do four things. Wow. Experience this world intentionally. Hmm. Question it deep enough to find the options that exist in it. Wow. And to know which of those options to embrace as a matter of supreme urgency. Wow. By that definition, so many people are not educated. Wow. Even with a PhD. Because they can't experience their world. Hmm. When they can, they cannot question it. Hmm. When they can question it, they won't question it deep enough to find options in it. Wow. And when they can find those options, they won't know the ones to embrace as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. When people are stranded, hmm. they are not stranded. They are just incapable of getting options. Hmm. When people are confused, it's not a psychological state. It is the inability or refusal or unpreparedness to take a decision in the face of options. Mm. A confused person is not clueless, that's ignorance. Mm. A confused person is someone with options he cannot choose from. Wow. So you yeah. can't actually be ignorant and be confused. Mm. When you are ignorant, you are clueless. When you are confused, you actually, you actually have know what options to do. You, know, you just you have just can't more decide. than one thing to do and mm. you can't decide. That is a confused person. Mm. Right, and if you can't do that, even with a PhD, you're not educated. Wow. Right. So, uh, but I've <laughs> always had that kind of consciousness, but it was yeah. misguided. Mm. I didn't have anyone to guide what I was feeling. There was so much capacity inside of me. Wow. Um, but I couldn't define it. I also grew up in a polygamous home. Okay. And that is two wives and thirteen kids. Wow. And that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. On yeah. A child. In the same house. In the same house. So mm. you have two moms. Um, dealing with the father and it's interesting because in a polygamous home your 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 the, everybody in the home the, the children from your own mom yeah and the children from the other mom all carry your dad's last name yes you're all showing us that's yes. your dad's last name yes except that the mom of the other kids tell them that you are the adversary mm. your own mom also tells you that you are the, they are your adversary, your adversary. so when and being adversarial is a label on people who carry your last name. Mm. That's true of the child. Wow. You know, what wow. you know about enemies is that they should be outside. They should not yeah. be in your house. Yeah. Who carry your last name? We used to together to watch TV. Mm. You know, uh, that's tough. Wow. And for then uh, in the same home, you know, your, your mom wants to be first in class. Mm. And she doesn't want to be first in class because of the ideal of excellence. She leaves you first in class because when you are first in class, it gets the dad's attention. Wow. It sends resources your mom's way mm. and inadvertently your own way. Yeah. So you then have to be conscious enough to do the right thing by getting the highest score. Yeah. As a child, that is too much. It's heavy. By the time mm. you become an adult, you practically become incapable mm. of pursuing things in their essence. Mm. You will rather master the pursuit of the loftiest things in life for the wrong reasons. Mm. So you want to be forced in class, not because of the ideal of excellence, but for the welfare economic value in the home. Yeah. Right? In the same way, they tell you don't eat here, don't eat here, and your mom is trying to protect you from your adversaries. Yes. Who carry your last name. Last name. By the time you become an adult, you practically become incapable of trusting anyone. Wow. You just live a life of paranoia. Very live true. A life of, you know, suspicion. Mm. And you don't trust anybody because you couldn't yes. trust people who carry your last name. Who are even living in the world same house. Yeah. People who live in the same house with yeah. you. Who your dad said are your siblings. Yeah. You know, so we can go on and on. But all of that, I was in the body house at the age of three. Three years yes. old. 
I was in the boarding house. Toddler. Yes, we used to have what is They called, had boarding schools yes, for toddler. Yes, back in the early 80s, we used to have baby classes. We used Whoa. to have baby classes. We have nursery one, nursery two, before primary one. So that was wow. where it was. And it was a boarding house. So you had people in nursery school who were boarding house. You have nursery schools, but a lot of them were were not boarding houses. Yeah, right? yeah. But we were a boarding house. Wow. You know, at that age, we you had Dick here. That a three-year-old should not be in any any school, as a matter of fact. Yeah. But, you know, growing up in that experience really ended life for me because mm. I I got my meaning from the street. Wow. You know, research have also shown that the dominant environment that you spend most of your time with will provide you with the, the inspiration. Mm. and guidance for you that you will look up to and thirst after as you go into adulthood, mm. right? And all behavior, research has also shown that all adult behavior is rooted in experiences in childhood. Wow. Not one, it's not so. All adult experiences are rooted in experiences in childhood. Wow. So you really can figure out an adult if you can take a peek mm. into his history. Mm. You can see a lot there. Yeah. So for me, I think I was born into confusion. Mm. I think I was born into chaos. And by this, I don't judge my parents. They had their reality. I, I will not sit here to support point from. I'm not there when my father was getting married. Yeah. Conditions that required that I get a second wife. Maybe will not be valid for my yeah. experience, but be yeah. valid for his own conscience at that yeah. time. Yeah. So um, the conscience transcends the limits of right and wrong. Mm. Conscience is about the needful. And at times what is needful may not appear right, yeah. but it's needful. I yeah. mean, Jesus, it was needful for Jesus to die, but it wasn't right Absolutely. for him to die. Yeah. He didn't commit any crime. He didn't offend anybody. Yeah. Right? But he had to die. It was mm -hmm. needful for him to die. It was mm -hmm. necessary for him to die. Mm. So in that same way, my parents made the wrong decisions, of course, mm. made the wrong calls. You know, but hey, they're not even here. I'm not going to even blame any. If you want to blame my parents, they're not here to take that blame. Yeah. So it's all on me now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I went through all those experiences. God spared me because mm. I know friends who are dead. I know mm. friends who are in jail. I know people who are wa wasted to drugs. Wow. You know, so I'm here and I represent a lot of value for millions of people. Praise God. The world. Absolutely. Right? So <laughs> that's priceless. But yeah, I would say that. I got through all of that through any strategic thinking. Mm. I think the mercy of God, the grace of God, mm. defended me when I was helpless. Mm. And I'm grateful because I can't sit down here to give anybody any map as to how you really defeat that kind of history. Mm. You know, outside to accept that there is a big guy, bigger than your own thoughts mm. that is watching you. Mm. And there is a big plan for your life mm. and transcend your own misbehaviors. And mm. somehow God allows the providence of his own design to just keep you, you know, out of the extreme yeah. of life where you can call yourself back. Yeah. You know, but somehow I was able to call myself back. Wow. And I gave my life to Christ. Um, and I began to move again and I had to start school all over again leading wow. to my 12 years in school. Ah, you know, so okay. it was tough but the, what I took away from there is that you know life is simpler than mm. we make it to be. If we have education, we know better, we do better. Yeah. You know, we know less, we do worse. Yeah. So um, I learned to uh, open my mind to my environment be as present as I can mm. to see what life would mean at every point in time but essentially what all of that represents um, all of my actions mean for those who observe me mm. and how that impacts on their own decisions and particularly the most vulnerable in society yeah. Yeah. so I think those things are important but yeah that would be my history I fought those battles I've made more mistakes after that mm. you know, those are almost natural not natural but those are experiences that I was born into. Yes. I won't blame myself for the impact of it on me. Yeah. You know, neither will I blame, blame the adults of my life who didn't, who didn't know better. Yeah. They were victims of their own experience as well. Yes. And the puddle of that of me. Yes. But there were the failures and experiences I then had which were my fault. Mm. You know, I then took a lot of decisions later that I will not say it's because of anybody. It's because I was, I didn't make the right decision, wrong yeah. calls wrong judgment, yeah. wrong business investment, yeah. and all of that. But what I say to people is that all things, mm. not some things, all things. Yeah. Um, I would rather till today be decisive and make a wrong decision 
mm. than to be indecisive trying to make the right decision. Wow, really? Yes. Mm. yes Why? Why is that? If I, I found that, that there's no way to define who I am today without all of my experiences. Mm. Somebody had asked me that would I be a better person if I wasn't in the court, if I didn't, if I wasn't, if I didn't use drugs, if I didn't do all of that. Would I be a better person if I didn't do everything I did? And I said that is that is easier for you to think I'll be a better person mm. because you are just doing, you are thinking linear. Yeah. One plus one is equal to two. Yeah. What if I'm dead? What if if I'm going to class? Maybe one day they were shooting up and I'm dead. Mm. Maybe not going to class or not going to school one day saved me from an accident. Mm. You don't know. Um, such that whatever life I got, maybe the cost for me living, maybe if I had been compliant and was going to school that day, there would have been an accident and I would have died mm, there. Right? True. So this, this are, this are, this are, again, if I didn't go through all I went through, yeah. or I didn't make the bad choices I made, <laughs> maybe I will be richer. Mm. Maybe I'll be more popular. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll be a better human being. But these are all maybes. Yeah. Maybe the world will end tomorrow. Mm. Maybe. You know, so it's like if, when you say, if I didn't call, I said, well, if my pedal still is not dead, if Tupac is still alive, <laughs> you could put anything around yeah. if. So we will never be able to validate mm. that expectation and that inference that you are making about where it, what, it, what my outcome could have been yeah. if I didn't make a wrong decision or if yeah. I didn't make wrong judgments. But what has happened is that I've made those judgments. Yeah. If I didn't make them, maybe I'll be better, maybe I'll be worse. It's yeah, not, exactly. I mean, there are it people could go who both ways. it could yeah. go both ways, we don't know. But the life that I know now, if I have to live it again, mm. not knowing any other lives, I will choose this life again. Mm. I will go left again. I will use drugs again. I will join the court again. Mm. I will fail in class again. Wow. I will do everything I've done. I will make all my mistakes again. The same mistakes. As long as it will bring me to where I am now. Mm. Because where I am now, I have not a single regret. Wow. Not a single one. Each of my pain have turned out to be amazing, you know, lessons that at the time were very painful. I didn't see any lessons in you. Yeah. I just wanted them to end. Yeah. That's all the experiences to end. But with the privilege of insight, yeah. I, I look back and I say, wow, thank God for that one. Thank wow. God for that one. There are people who left my life that today, at that time, I thought it was a loss. Mm. And today, you know, I look back at who they have become and I'm so glad that, <laughs> you know, I was out of their life and yeah. I look at the people that they were with, yeah. that they stayed with and how all of them are now so small a village and I'm building a nation, you know, mm. so I'm like, wow, you know, it's amazing how, you know, life supports your, your reality, mm. your sincerity rather, and your faith. Mm. You know, and the willingness to stand alone with God, regardless yeah. of who approves or does not, or how popular mm. your experiences are or unvalidated they were at that mm. time. But if you have the courage to stay true to your to your essence yeah. and the faith that defines you, the universe compensates that. Mm. You know, it's the way God had designed it. The universe compensates that. So um, that is that is how it has been for me. And where I am now, I feel so proud. And I'm able to speak to the things I speak to. And I'm able to lead the people I lead because of the priceless lessons yeah. that I took away from my so-called shortcomings, mm. right? And there's no way I could be doing the work I'm doing now. Mm. I know people who confide in me at the highest level possible, who, who will never speak to anyone except that they knew that you've walked a journey yourself. Mm. You know, the way yeah. I put it most of the time is beware of generals without scars. Yeah. You know, beware of those kind of people who seem to have climbed so much, you know, up the run. <laughs> really can't find the yeah, track record the track of Scars, of scars or, or struggles or whatever that define them, except a corner of which we fall to the ground and die, it can't abide. So, you know, there's just a, a, a sense in which you have to be able to make a connection between your struggles, your pain, and your highest mm. in life. You really can't discount them. 
part of what I've learned is that all human stories, the best of them, even the movies and the ones that make the the blockbusters at the box office, yeah. they are all telling stories. And the most incredible stories of the human condition are six. It's either you are telling the story of rice or what, what <laughs> some may call grace, mm. or you are telling the story of um, fall mm. or what is called grass, or you are telling the story of rice and fall mm. or grace to grass, mm. or you are telling the story of fall to rice, yeah. grass to grace, or you are telling the story of rice, fall, rice, rice <laughs> which is grace, grass, grace. Mm. Or a story of fall, rise and fall, oh, okay, yeah. which is grass, grace, um, grass. Mm. All of life is within that six. Mm. It's either you never went beyond fall, born free, dead a slave, mm. or you know, rise and fall, born free, still died a slave. Mm. You know, or born free, die free. You, you, know, <laughs> you, 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 you have a choice, yeah. and your experiences can condition you mm. into any of those six. Mm. You know, but for for me, is grace for grace, 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 grace. Mm. grace. That's just what grace it's going God. to be. That's yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Like you just said towards the end, your experiences can condition you into any of those six. So how is it that because there are other people who would have gone through your experiences? and they won't be where you are today. Yes. Um, they could be better or they could be worse, yes. right? But how did you, how did you not allow those experiences to defeat your soul? Yes. To I, defeat I, your soul. First of all, you know, one of the level of freedom that I understood very early is the freedom of the soul what I call the freedom of the conscience. The idea that at the end of the day, I want nothing. Mm. I only want what works for my authentic journey. Mm. I am not um, emotional about my experiences. Mm. Whatever they are, I welcome them all. Wow. They are manure for my newness. Wow. They are raw material for my um, eventuality. Um, for my highest. So somehow I gained that clarity early and I think that also deepened some of my struggles on the left. Oh. Because a lot of my struggle is also me refusing to align with the status quo. Okay. But yeah. without guidance. Mm. So God coming into my life was guided um, knowledge. Mm. And, but I've always had this creative rebellion inside of me, the idea that whatever is created by man mm. serves a dispensation. Mm. That I hold it to myself to question every experiences sent my way in my life. Mm. So I don't greet knowledge with view or with opinion. I greet knowledge with curiosity. Mm. No matter what you say to me, no matter who is saying it, mm. I don't accept it because somebody is saying it. <laughs> you know, I question it. It has to fall in line with the uniqueness of my journey. If it doesn't, I can't validate it. Even if it's said by 200 popes combined, <laughs> I really can't accept it. And it doesn't mean I'll be right. Mm. It doesn't mean I'll be right. But if I ended up wrong, I don't want to blame anyone but myself. Yeah. So I really can't endure the misfortune of experiencing a deep pain alone and accepting that somebody was responsible for it mm. and the person is walking free. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> make sense to me. You know, so yeah. whatever it is, and that was how my life was mm. for a very long time. But I got to a point where I said, you know what, if I fail, which I don't believe in, failure, I believe mm -hmm. in failing, yeah. right? But if I get things wrong, it will only at worst be a part of my journey. Mm. So I can fail because I am always in failing mode. Mm. You know, failing is a verb. Failure is a noun. Mm. Nouns are oppressive because it tried to speak to a destination mm. like yeah, and it's impractical there's, there's no destination called failure it, mm, it, it, it's impractical true. it's not real everywhere you stop somebody has gone beyond that it's true. really human choices that is most important people true. camp around human choices and mm. they allow choice 
and it's oppressive contest to determine their limits. Mm. You know, and choices um, without understanding can perpetuate your slavery, mm. you know, uh, both to man or to systems. So, because real power stay in the options. And when the options are already chosen for you, what That's is the power not. of your choice? <laughs> so the options can arrest your choice or and make your choice almost useless because what is the point of choosing between two foolish things or yeah. between three three foolish people yeah. if somebody else is responsible for the options that your choice will work on, yeah. right? Yeah. So I've always believed in what I call CIA, credible independent actions. Credible, credible independent, independent actions, actions that okay. at the end of the day I will consider all that I need to consider I will speak to everybody I need to speak to I will gather up views and opinions everywhere mm. but none of them will be my decision mm. it's just enough tools on my in my for working you. table for me to decide what I'm going to do so mm. that whether my decision works or not I don't blame anybody but okay trust me mm. I don't believe taking responsibility to blaming myself either Mm. I'm conscious of nothing he gives myself. Wow. Nothing. I don't blame myself for anything wow. because I can't see poison and take it. Mm. So I mean, me and my actions are different. Mm. I want good for myself. Any yeah, action yeah. I take that ended up bad, it's not me. Yeah. It's judgment. I will live beyond that. I'm better than my judgments. Mm. My, my judgment live in a free world. So I will not have perfect thoughts. Mm. I will not have perfect experiences yes, because yes. planet Earth itself, including my mortal body, cannot contain perfection. Mm. But my intention transcends my, my judgments and my mm. actions. So whatever it is that happened to me, I take responsibility for it because I did it. Yeah. And if I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to go to jail alone, right? Yeah. So I did it. But I know that that is just a face. A part of me know I'm better than this experience. Mm. I'm only a victim of the human condition. Yeah. So my mind is already beyond that experience. Wow. And I'm already living in a better reality, though I am still in that experience. Really? I'm in a better reality because I know I'm better than this and I have a better promise than this experience. Mm. And I know God will never put your miracle beyond your reach. Mm. Neither will He put it in the hand of your adversaries. Mm. So whatever it is that gets you into a very painful negative mode, Recognize that most of the time there are a lot of actors in that process that are guaranteeing that pain for you. Mm. Right? Own that pain, but only enough to progress, not to sit in one corner blaming yourself for where you could mm. have done better, where you could have gone. So I understand lessons, but I don't have regrets. <laughs> if regret means to sit down somewhere moaning and say, Oh, I wish I had done that right, I don't mm. have that. But lessons that say that, well, this scenario can work better this way. And if I have to navigate my way here, this is how we look at it. Yeah. And this is what I would recommend for those coming after me. Mm. I also know, Buki, that opportunities once lost will always be regained. Mm. It's a silly idea that opportunities once lost can never be regained. Mm. Right? If that is true, redemption will be unnecessary. Mm. Redemption will be useless. True. Every articulation true. of repentance will be useless. True. There will be no chances. Once you have gone to jail, that will be the end of your life. Yeah. Right? Opportunities once lost, actually goes into the future to multiply. Wow. Opportunities don't come back to you in the same bouquet that you lost it. Mm. Once you lose an opportunity is the slave of the human condition. Mm. So no matter what you do with the opportunity, the worst you can do is to leave you, multiply, get bigger, and go wait for you in front. Mm. That is why redemption is possible. Wow. That is why turnarounds around are possible. Yeah. That is why yeah. apology makes sense. That's why being sorry makes sense. Mm. They make sense because there's always a higher possibility, a richer possibility ahead that transcends the limits of your prevailing pain or wow. prevailing discomfort, wow. right? Or your prevailing loss. So for me, what I have, I didn't find this in any book. Wow. But looking at my life yeah. and the life of so many people, I've said, opportunity doesn't even go. Mm. All the guys that lost an opportunity, you know, somehow got a bigger opportunity. Mm. But it gave your variety with your more. Mm. Tell yourself that opportunity is gone forever. That becomes your wall. Mm. Yeah, they're going to scale that wall or be bound by that wall. Yeah. But I don't have such bondage, you know. Wow. Opportunity that I lose goes to the future to multiply. And again, that's another bigger one is that that opportunity actually is always chasing you. Mm. Opportunities are designed to gravitate toward the human being. Mm. What happens most of the time is hustle, hustling, break yeah. that cycle. 
So because you are hustling, which is not right for the human being, yeah. positioning in what is right for the human being mm. is it our destiny as well. Mm. Right? It's the jungle that should be hustling. <laughs> the of the jungle. But when you are looking for what is looking for you, you keep missing each other. Mm. So, okay. you know, you know, so when you say hustling, like with desperation, like you are striving. It justifies the means. Mm. And I'm getting now, you know, I was passed the test of popularity, okay. politically correct. And all of those things that mm. keep people small, few people actually walk in their freedom. Mm. You know, social media can Im imprison your life. Mm. Word, word. You know, we can find who you are by your likes. <laughs> Just seeing what you are liking, we can make you are. Ah, true. Just what you are liking. You can say whatever you are saying about yeah. yourself. Yeah. I don't need that. If I sit down and look at your behavior of social media, yeah. I pretty much know who you are, people your soul like account. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So um I've, I've, I I I'm I'm not ashamed to say that I've I've found that everything made by man has capacity to imprison you. Mm, wow. And you it is your duty to audit before you commit to anything. Yeah. And to ensure that everything you are receiving is consistent with your own highest ideals and mm. the meaning and the assumption that are critical for your own growth. Right? Yeah. And if it is not, to then have the courage to jettison those things, even mm. if you feel it's popularity. Mm. You know, but life got you. Wow. Right? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, PK. Wow. Amazing. Um, the next, the next thing I wanted you to speak into was you had, you went through a severe, deadly, if I could put it that way, crisis. I think was it in two thousand and eight? The yes, whole financial. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean that that was a situation that will probably have killed so many people. <laughs> so many people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Please speak into that and tell yeah. us the background yeah. and how did you get through that season yes. without your soul being yes. defeated? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's money. I invested for I used to invest for people. I okay. used to help people uh, multiply their money. Ooh, vegan, right? Okay. So investing on the stock market, on the different market, okay. real estate, the real real in the real economy. I mean, on all of that. So I was yeah. doing that. And that was the same year, 2008, that we had a stock market crash. Ah, we had a global meltdown. Yes. So everything was just working against, wow. you know, investments at the time. Yeah. And I, I was one of those people that got unnecessarily uh, pragmatic wins mm. on the stock market. And so when it crashed, things crashed. I was wow. also invested in some other businesses. And for some reason, everything just went against me. And before I knew what was happening at that time, the value, the exposure would have been over three million dollars. Wow, so it, 2008. Yeah, so it was a lot of money. Wow. Um, and everyone in uniform was looking for me, <laughs> from police <laughs> to Boy Scout, <laughs> Red Cross. Wow. Anything in uniform was looking for me. How are you sleeping? I I wasn't sleeping very well. Hmm. Um, I was, at the end of that experience, uh, by the way, I, I got grace, um, paid all my debts. Wow, and, thank God. Um, some were forgiven, mm. you know, uh, but um, if I knew what I know now, mm. I would have handled that something better. Mm. Because I then realized that even those I was owing don't want me to die. <laughs> <laughs> they need me alive to pay that way. Mm, true. Uh, I overpowered the urgency. Mm. I disempowered myself so many times by overpowering the creditor. Mm. And um, not just doing that, but empowering the ignorance and naivety of the creditor. Mm. Right? I'm bolder now, I'm more um, assertive, I know more of my rights now. Because I didn't commit any crime. Mm. I didn't commit any crime. Things yeah. went back with proofs. Yeah. You know, but somehow people have tolerance for themselves. Mm. They just find it very difficult to have that for others. Mm. Because if the person you own when um had lost the money by himself, yeah. he would forgive himself real quick. Yeah. He would not <laughs> he True. Did and robbed him and collected the money. He would go to church to testify that he's alive. True. The only reason why he had a problem and is shouting and breaking and getting police involved is because somebody lost somebody else lost the money. Mm. If you drive your car and you bash it, you will clean your pieces and find the way forward. True. If somebody else drives that car, you're gonna act like if, if you are driven it, 
you wouldn't have had it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, true. yeah, yeah. It's just the wretchedness of the human condition mm. that has high tolerance for your own struggles and limitations yeah. and challenges. But zero for that of oh, others, mm. right? But I didn't realize that at that time. So I am now because all I needed to do at that time was to go dig out, get my lawyer to write everybody. I always mm. had this concept. But I put it on my head, I have to pay and I was like, oh, I larger hat. Mm. You know, so that was gonna be on the education for the rest of my life. Wow. You know, and all of that. You know, um wow. so looking back, I I, I mean people misbehave. Mm. You know, some people today come, they want to get your bag, they want to show respect and all of that, but they seem to have forgotten mm. how they what, what their attitude was at that time. Wow. Their ignorance and short sightedness. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, but you, you, you just have to also understand your ignorance and forgive. Yeah. You know, but people try to ride on your backs. People will be grateful to even say it to you. Mm. By giving you counsel on how to <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but um I think the grace of God helped me because mm. I didn't know much at that time. I was already a public figure, I already had a name out there, I was already teaching, but no part of that prepared me for mm. the embarrassment, wow. for the shame mm. um, of that experience. Yeah. You know. But all of that is gone now and um now I know better. Yeah. You know, and so uh, it's not an experience I recommend for anyone. <laughs> if anyone you know, ever gets into that kind of situation, yeah. I always tell them, calm down by the end of the world. Mm. People you admire owe money. Mm. People you respect owe money. Mm. So if you did not commit a crime, even if you commit a crime, own it and face the common law and navigate your way out, yeah. you should still not be a slave of anyone mm. or the slave of that circumstance. Mm. But most probably if it was a legitimate business that went bad, it's error of judgment. You know, mm. beat yourself with that. Come up with a strategy. You know, come up with a plan of payment, have a conversation with them, mm. do it legally. You know, if anybody tries to harass you, particularly in some third world countries, you know, yeah. fundamental human rights and yeah. protect yourself and fight back. Yeah. You know, um, don't just take the back seat and feel sorry for yourself as people become crude and brutal. Mm. With breaking fundamental human rights yeah. and trying to oppress you yeah. deep in your soul. You have to you know, repel that and, mm. and fight back confidently. I didn't commit a crime. This is a civil case, it's not a criminal matter. Yeah. Know? So yeah, that's that but God helped me through that time. Mm. It was also a time where, you know, I you know, just as crack, the natural character of a crisis is for a spiritual person, it drew me closer to mm. help me to um I was introduced to be. Wow. On many levels. I, I met myself on levels that I would never have if mm. I would have crisis. So I came out better. Wow. I came out stronger. Wow. I've helped so many people navigate that kind of season till date. Because I always tell them, no, no matter what you are going through, it's yeah. for somebody else. Yeah. Just calm down. Your story is not the end of story. Yeah. Let them, you have the monopoly of problems. Mm. If you get bold, um, define it as a season, you know, gain clarity and intelligence. Yeah, and so it has an end date. It has an end mm. date for sure. Every mm. human experience is designed with expiry. Mm. Mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everything it's true. That's is true. designed with expiry. That's so true. Your problems are inspired. Mm. Just have the path. Exactly. You know, just have the path up through. It's going to go Amazing. Even if you don't ever pay the money, mm. the people you owe will be weary <laughs> true? of chasing you. True. So keep your composure. Yeah. Do your best. Pay all you can pay. If you have the money, pay everybody back. There's no testimony in being a debtor. Mm. So you know, if you have the money, you pay back. But if for whatever reason, after best effort, and I tell everyone this, whatever happened to you after best effort is God's will for you. Mm. Don't stress it. Mm. Mm. Just That's ensure powerful. you supply best effort. Whatever powerful. the outcome of your life is, after best effort, that's God's plan for you. Mm. I love that. I love that. I love that. Wow. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. So after, okay, moving on from that crisis, you, I know you do a lot of crisis management, change management for people, organizations, relationships. I've been a <laughs> beneficiary. <laughs> I've, I've, I've witnessed and benefited from your crisis management in my own personal life. And PK, you are someone that you're not only gifted with supernatural wisdom, 
you are also extremely skilled in your words like knowing the things to say knowing when to say it and it's amazing i just thought i should tell you that it's, it, it really is amazing it really is it's it's mind-blowing honestly and i just wanted to you, you also say you say that crisis is a part of life and i totally agree there's this quote that i love it says uh, life is not about wishing the storm away it's about learning how to dance in the rain mm. you know you have to learn how to dance in the rain because you can't keep praying and waiting for the storm to pass you put your life on hold you're not living you're not you're just praying that this mm -mm. how about we start to change how we see this storm and we start to learn how to dance in the rain so if storms of different magnitudes are going to always be a part of life it could be from a crisis of maybe you're having issues with your boss or you got fired you lost your job or you're going through a divorce or you just lost a loved one there will always be one thing or another right so how how can we how can we develop the coping mechanism uh, based on your experience and all your relationship crisis management and counseling and all that you do how can we develop the right mindset for crisis management in life you know such that we can we can continue to thrive regardless of any yeah. season we're in so I, I think the beginning of that is to first of all understand that crisis and fail when they come start mm. and wow. crisis may fall on our peace mm. in fact there is no articulation of peace if there's no background of Christ is true. You know, peace by its nature itself. Yeah. You know, is preceded by Christ. That's mm. why we would value on peace. Yeah. It is the reality and the possibility of the prevailing state or the, pre the prevailing reality of Christ and the possibilities in it mm. that gives meaning to, mm. your, peace. to your peace. Yes. So, new level is new death. <laughs> you, you, you really can't do your next level mm. if you are not going to accept the disruption of your prevailing excellence mm. that has to go mm. you know it's, it's like you can't love you can't love um your first year university <laughs> that you want to stay there you stay there you, know, you got to go past the higher exam yeah you move to second year yeah pass the higher exam. yes I move to third yes. year and that's a and very good exam yeah <laughs> You know, you can't, you can't, you just have to move on. You can't mm. love your life as a teenager so much. Mm. And you're going to be 20 something. You have yeah. to, you gotta move on. Yeah. And you, there are higher tests, you know. Yes. So yes. that's yes. how life is. So you, you, we need to actually be helped at times mm. to develop the conditioning that allow our mind, because your brain does not know the difference between lie and truth. Mm. The human brain does not know a lie, mm. it doesn't know the truth. Mm. So you can actually deceive the brain. Mm. You can you can convince your brain that you are sick or you'll be sick. Mm. The brain will send signals to every part of the body that will make you sick. Wow. If you convince your brain that you are sick, you'll be sick. In the same way, you can actually deceive your brain. Mm. And you, you need a, met, a right, healthy mental attitude mm. for crisis. Yeah. Because nobody will ever be immune mm. from crisis. Mm. You don't get so prepared. You don't, you don't, you don't know enough mm. to be immune from crisis. Mm. You will get something wrong. You yeah. will make a wrong decision. Yeah. You will, be, you will get someone into your life who will mess into <laughs> So that if it's not your fault, if it's somebody's fault, yeah. it will affect you. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, 9 11, innocent people died there. Yeah. You know, they didn't, they were not evil people, they don't yeah. plant bombs, they didn't tell anybody, but a bomb came and meet them there, yeah. a plane came into their building. I mean, it's just the way it is. Some people became permanently disabled. Mm. Mm. You know, good people too. Yes. You know, so um, crisis is a constant. Yeah. Right? If that is true, what kind of presence ought we to be? Mm. Because we will never be in a demilitarized zone. Mm. You know, at every point in time, life is militarized. Yeah. There's always something on the horizon True. that True. is an having form of plan interruption to the best of your plan. True. Right? So mm. how do you deal with that? Because those things will occur. Yeah. They will occur by your own poor judgment or wrong judgment or 
broke TV on, mm-hmm. or by that of someone else. You yeah. know? For, for a long time, I used to blame myself when people uh, used to look for what I've done wrong, when people <laughs> behave around me, maybe it's my fault, or because I used to believe that there's no hate towards you mm. without a cause. Mm. You know, there's something you have done that can make people hate you, make people misbehave, or yeah. renegade on their promise. Yeah. Or oh, there's a misunderstanding, they just don't understand. Yes. Mm. But I saw it my chore. I mean, I like that one. <laughs> You don't actually need to do anything mm. for people to hit you. Yeah. People can hit you just because you didn't do anything. Yeah. Wrong. Right? So human beings can generate hate by themselves. Yes. Yeah, so. That yes. wretchedness again of the human condition. Yeah. So I don't look to what I've done when things go wrong. I know it's possible I didn't do anything. You know, a lot of times it's just the whole wretchedness. I, I don't pay for that. You know, so people will best misbehave. You know, mm. get things wrong. So first of all, you need that mental attitude, mm. that emotional, you know, intelligence yeah. that gives you the awareness to know that look, on your best day, something will go wrong. Mm. You know, just something will go wrong if mm. it's not you to be somebody else. Yes. But on another day, you'll be almost crisis free. Mm. But you can you can have crisis free moment. Yeah. You can have crisis free days. You can have crisis free season. But you can't have a crisis free life. No. Not possible. Not possible. Everything is temporal. Mm. Peace time and the <laughs> temporal. Like I said, everything in the human experience has expired. Mm. On your highest testimony, you will not have testimonies till you die. <laughs> you are going to move into another crisis. Yes. That will necessarily say that you act in another way that will mm. back your testimony. Mm. Right? So that's the way it is. So mm. that is first of all, critical. Secondly, is to prepare. Mm. Is to constantly prepare, develop a man, man, mentality that you know is you know undefeatable. Mm. I, I can't be defeated. Mm. I, I don't have a mentality. No matter my my lot in life, no matter what happens to me, I will keep. I've, I've played some scenarios in my mind. What if I lose my leg? What will mm. I do? Mm. What do I do? Is that wow. my life? Wow. What if I go blind? Mm. What do I do? Hmm. What if I, what if, you know, I've thought of wow. different, and I've answered the question. Yeah. If I lose my leg, I'm going to get a wheelchair. Hmm. I'm going to keep moving. Going. You know, what if I, you know, so I've thought of, and when I, people have the experiences that I'm privileged to be part of, maybe they have a loss or and I visit to mourn, I kind of, you know, play this in that, put myself in that scenario. I said, if this was happening, I do that as well. How will I respond? Yeah. You know, what would I do? Will I just sit down, sad, sorrowful, or will I take action? Mm. You know? And so I've accepted that no matter where I found myself, I will respond. Mm. No matter where I found myself, so I'll never stop. Mm. No matter, you bring it. So I'm like a ball. Mm. You know, you, you, you hit the ball on the ground, the harder you hit, the harder it goes. <laughs> You know. Wow. So you, it's safer to let me be. You know, <laughs> I'm just letting me know. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough to know. But if you care to unsettle me, you are not giving me my meal mm. to navigate my next level. Mm. I love challenges. And, and I've grown to the level now where I fear nothing. Wow. I mean, I've seen 10 years five times with some extra. Right? <laughs> so I said to myself that every time I've had a crisis, I have won. Mm. So at a particular year, I said, I can't live my life being afraid of crisis. Mm. None have defeated me. Mm. So now, let me just start acting the part. <laughs> because this thing is in, in, exactly. in a good story. Yeah. So now, I act the part. Mm. I mean, you're going to end right. So, I, because for about 10 something years, I was afraid of crisis. Mm. None of them mm. me. <laughs> I won. I got better. I got more money. I got more attention. I got more influence. Mm. So then this crisis seems to be sort of popular type of promotion really. mm. so i now wow. align with that and wear the right attitude towards it wow and get more excited and more creative and i've been in that lie you know because i tell people you also have to know how to tell your own lies <laughs> to your mind mm. and condition your mind mm. to believe your truth because your reality is incomplete mm. and reality is a limitation mm. 
reality will limit you because it doesn't have enough news and enough information to give you your ultimate comfort. Wow. So if you believe your reality, you cut yourself short. Wow. There's always a positive, a positive truth beyond your reality. Wow. Because your reality is a partial representation of your truth. Mm. So people, people define their life by their reality. They say, that's my reality. Well, that's my reality. That's not my truth. Mm. Right? So my reality is, I'm in this situation. But I got a better narrative beyond that. So mm. I look at the website. Yeah. Right? And as a futurist, I've mastered the skill of only working in the future. Mm. Everything happening to me is feedback from the future. Mm. That's how I see. So I want to see what that future is. If you punch me now, it's a feedback. There's something about what you just did and the future. Mm. I'm not as bothered about what you did as I'm about by the ultimate I'm bothered about the ultimate picture. Mm. And really what the experience is feedback from the future. Wow. So don't be moved by the things mm. in your prevailing moments. Find the connection to the future. Mm. But there's something about the future that this is signaling to you. Mm. And if, if you will not always have the clarity of mind to map that, yeah. so you need one or two warriors in your life mm. who are dispassionate mm. about whatever it is you are going through, mm. but who enjoy your progress. Mm. and who find great happiness in your growth mm. who have no mm. incentive to compete with you mm. but to, to just contribute to you wow. and who wow. are spiritually, experientially mm. and probably professionally qualified mm. to, to give you counsel mm. or to be on your wisdom table mm. right? Again, none of their views should be your final position mm -hmm. but they should be usable to to make up your decision, to make mm. up your mind to take a decision, mm. right? But you need those people. You won't have a lot of them. So a lot of people try to act in a place of support, mm. but they don't have the spine to spoil in True, place. true. Talk is cheap. True. Paul said, let no man cause trouble for me because I carry on my body the mm. for our Lord Jesus Christ. And like I said earlier, beware of generals without scars. Yeah. Feed my ch feed my child who have never been to the field. Mm. Right? So look for track record of competence. Mm. For me to offer me guidance or to contribute on my wisdom table or in my war room, I want to see your spiritual weights. Mm. Right? I want to see how, that you are spiritually, spiritually. Mm. And professionally qualified yeah. to sit on in that world so that yeah. you will become a distraction. Yeah. Right? Not no matter my state, no matter my problem, you don't qualify to speak to me just because you are not in a crisis. Mm. <laughs> you know, you have to earn your right to speak to me. Yeah. I don't listen to everyone. Yeah. Right? So that determines the type of books you allow, mm. the kind of courses you go to. Kind of, you know, somebody recommended a course for us and said, Oh, six of them are going to take a course. And he said, If you share with me, would I love to take the course? I said, No. <laughs> so the guy can't help me. I'm sorry, you can call him right, but he can't help me. Mm. He doesn't have the capacity to mm. help I should help him. <laughs> I said, So if you guys take the course, you know, you need it, but I yeah. don't. You know, yeah. don't, we are not the same. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, we're not the same thing. you guys go do that. I mean, not all birds can live in a cage. Mm, true. Some birds have to fly around. Yes, so. You know, I told someone, say, you know, you don't see me in a particular place again. Mm. You see that I should show up here. We used to all be here. <laughs> I'm not a bird for the cage. I'm a bird for the world. I want to mm. fly. I want to see the skies. I want to mm. fly everywhere. Some birds are made for the cage. They're mm. cage birds. I'm and that's okay. And it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. But I look at my wings. They have so hard. <laughs> I've, I've grown every cage. Mm. I, have I always wow. tell people, if you are a soaring bird, accept it. Don't feel sorry. Don't apologize. Make yourself but smaller. Make for... yourself smaller. Mm. Feed the cage. You know, respect your wings mm. and fly. Mm. You know? Yeah. Amazing. Um, um, yeah, that's it. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. We could go on and on. We could go on for hours. Like I said, <laughs> yeah, we do this in yes. private and we're talking for yes. hours, right? Yes. So. I'd just like us to end it here because yeah. it's so snacks. <laughs> we want it to be a little bit short. Yeah. I mean, you know, short we'll and sweet. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll come back <laughs> another time. Um, I just wanted us to end on something a bit light okay. or lighter. I can't really imagine you because you are so 
I can't imagine having fun, doing something fun. Yeah. That <laughs> I wanted to know, share with the viewers, I what does fun. PK do um, for fun? Well, for fun, first of all, I sleep. <laughs> I sleep. I enjoy to sleep. Really? It's what I love the most. Wow. It's what I do the least. Wow. But every time I have a chance to sleep, I sleep like a fool. Wow. Uh, so I love I that. Do do that. I love um, that. Again, I like to hang out with friends. Okay. I don't have a lot of them. But there are some um, fellow travelers, mm. you know, who you, 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 the fun is in self, um, short of romance, you know, it's, oh, wow. it's amazing. Oh. The conversation, uh, priceless, oh, wow. you know, uh, and I'm not talking, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm a Christian yeah. and I'm a Christian voice. Some of these guys are not Christian. Ooh. Oh, wow. Jewish, Muslim. Wow. But they are fellow travelers. Mm. You know, and that's easy to comprehend. They don't speak in tongues at Samsung. <laughs> right? They don't do video True. At Apple. True. If you have the chance to sit with Tim Cook, you're not going to see the goddess with this. They're not going to go to church. You're not going to miss it. Yeah. Right? So, fellow travelers are different. Mm. They may not share faith, mm. but they share journey. Mm. Uh, they share also intelligence at a level that sheds unnecessary weight of nuances and mm. interests. Mm. There are some things Jeff Bezos will never do. Yeah. Right? It doesn't need to be a person of faith. They are just not consistent with the contents of the requirement for progress. Mm. The highest level, right? Yeah. So it's the way it is. Um, so I enjoy to go out if I have to. I also enjoy family. No. Uh, time with family is priceless for me. Amazing. My wife, my son, to sit down and watch a movie. Yeah. Um, I try. <laughs> to get those going. Amazing. Um, yeah, and then I will not turn down an opportunity to balance um, serious exchange with fun time. Mm. You know, I will not. I will, I will take that. Right. That's good. Yeah. I, I, so most what everyday people do, right? <laughs> I do, I just feel the right people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I watch a lot of documentary. Mm. I only watch true life movies. I try to avoid. Things. Really? Why? Why, Why is that? that? <laughs> Somebody, this story is. They made it up. It's not real. Somebody is just you know. So I think I've enjoyed Rambo or ah, Rambo. So okay. Metaphor. Somebody got George one country and killed. Two million people that take on an entire army. Mm. You know, those things don't work for me. <laughs> you know, true life stories. Yeah, I know they happen. They happen. You okay. Know, I really want to watch awesome epic movies like mm. The Godfather. Godfather mm. one and two. Really? Godfather one and two. I've seen. I'm not exaggerating. Over thirty times. Whoa! I've even seen it once. Oh, you should. <laughs> it's packed with because it's drawn from the real contest of the Cosa Nostra in Italy, which is the Mafia. Okay. Right? So it's real contest for oh. how that world is. And so there's a popular thing like, uh, put your friends close, your enemy closer. Mm. That's not for you in the Godfather. Oh, okay. Right? So, I, know, no, I mean, it's mixed with wisdom wow. and it's with intelligence. Wow. Right? So, okay. yeah, so I do That's that. good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also like good ah. food. Is, oh. Yes. I like good food and I like to Food for me is almost therapy, you know. Oh wow! And I eat well and I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes. I love that. Wow! I mean, that's good to know. Thank, Thank you so you. much, PK. Amazing. So we're going to end it here. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much, PK, for all the gems you've shared. Thank you for the time. He's a very busy man. It was it was it was difficult, but we got him. We got him here. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. This is priceless. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Mm -mm. Wholesome snacks for the soul. Now you know that was shareworthy. So why don't you share, like, comment, and subscribe to Oasis with Video for more episodes of Soul Snacks.